So now that we've talked about this concept of energies coming from the sun, an assortment of energies, and an assortment of things in the Earth's atmosphere that can either um, absorb energy, um, scatter energy, or transmit energy, um, we can talk about this concept of atmospheric windows. So we say that, um, that the window is wide open to uh, to a particular energy if that particular energy can pass through that particular component. Um, we say that the window is closed if um, either something in the Earth's atmosphere either um, scatters or absorbs that particular energy. And you'll see what I mean. So um, we talk about um, we talk about windows in the Earth's atmosphere either being open or closed, and what's happening is that components in the Earth's atmosphere are interacting with particular wavelengths of energy coming from the sun. And it's pretty cool how we basically have a nice little balance of um, stuff in our atmosphere that um, protects us and yet allows um, us to um, gather energy from the sun. I don't know, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So what this is, is the radiation curve of, um, it's part of the radiation curve of what energies the sun is sending in all directions. And so remember how you read a radiation curve is on the bottom, we have an assortment of radiations. Um, this is the, over here on the right, excuse me, over here on the left is the shortest wavelength. Shortest. Okay, and down here it starts with ultraviolet, so over here we would have X-rays and gamma rays. And then over here we have the longest wavelength. Longest lambda. We use that symbol lambda for wavelength. Um, and just kind of not necessarily drawn to scale, know that the Earth is, is oozing its own amount of radiation into space. Actually, the, um, the, it's oftentimes, the way I think of it, is kind of re-emitting um, radiation that it absorbed from the sun. But this is, this is its cute little curve, and notice that it's over here, and we kind of talked about that before, that its whole curve is shifted here to the longer wavelength, which makes sense. Um, one of the laws of radiation is that if it's cooler, which the Earth is from the sun, then it will um, kind of peak at longer wavelengths, and it's squattier. But we're going to um, kind of look at an assortment of gases, stuff that's in the Earth's atmosphere. Of course, um, the major gas component in the Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen. And the way you read this is, this is the little scale for nitrogen, and this is 100% absorbance. Okay, and so notice that it do, nitrogen does absorb at a particular, a handful of wavelengths. Okay, really absorbs here and kind of moderately absorbs down there. Otherwise, nitrogen is wide open to transmitting, receiving, and allowing these other forms of radiation to kind of come and go. Um, another important um, the ingredient in the Earth's atmosphere um, is ozone, and we talked about good ozone and bad ozone, but also um, molecular oxygen, or O2, about 20% of the gas that you're breathing in is, is O2. And here is the um, absorbance, of, or the absorptivity of ozone and O2. So notice that here, okay, we talked about how o, ozone, O3, blocks incoming um, ultraviolet radiation and that so the window is closed we say O3 is closed to incoming of uh, that particular wavelength ultraviolet radiation uh, let's see we also have kind of a a little bit of a spike over here where it blocks um, incoming radiation at that particular wavelength. Isn't that interesting how it's kind of picky which wavelength it blocks? Now not only would it be blocking it coming in, but it would also be blocking it going out. See what else do we have in the atmosphere? We also have carbon dioxide and water vapor. Remember that those two gases are what we call variable gases, aren't they? And and it's kind of interesting. These are the um, you know the little mini scale zero percent absorbance to 100% absorbance, 0% absorbance to 100% absorbance of water vapor and carbon dioxide respectively. So where if you see the blue, that would be a closed window. 
So um, I just think that is so cool. Um, so so um, one of the things that I guess I would say collectively with these four kind of little mini showing us where the windows are. Notice that nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and H2O, they are all totally open to visible light. Okay, O2 and, and, and um, ozone are a little bit, have a tiny little bit of a kind of an interaction there with that particular wavelength. But that's pretty cool. I wanted to um, introduce you to, because we'll be talking more about it later, um, but down here, do you see this where it's short wave radiation? Um, I think it's sometimes called SW for short wave or long wave radiation, LW for long wave. And um, I want you to kind of start to um, kind of uh, be thinking about that. In other words, uh, no, one way to think about short wave radiation is can you see where, um, if we were going to kind of um, say the sun or the earth, can you see that the sun is emitting basically short wave radiation because it's hotter, significantly hotter, and the earth is oozing long wave radiation. Long wave radiation would be infrared and um, infrared microwave um, radio waves. Another thing is, I guess I would just point out, point out this wind, this uh, note down here. Um, there is um, an atmospheric window about here for um, water vapor and carbon dioxide, and of course nitrogen doesn't um, interact with infrared radiation. But this window, it said, is is important for basically the Earth to kind of vent and cool off. Okay, because remember those windows are, are two-way, incoming from the sun and outgoing from the earth. 